Okay, there we go. We're thank live. you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being a Sauscast episode 14 in the house. We're officially live. Thank you guys for being patient with us. Thank you. All right? We're running a whole operation. You should see what's going on over around these parts. Moving, grooving, moving stuff, meetings, interviews. Their Sauscast starts at 4. No, it's at 4.15 today. It's okay. So sorry to keep you guys waiting. We see a lot in the comments right there. I appreciate you guys. Um... I'm feeling good. How are you feeling good? I'm feeling good. It's a beautiful Thursday afternoon, and we're Did you get your right coffee? On time. I did, yeah. My okay. coffee's right over here. Well, since we're running late, we're just going to, let's just, bam, let's get right into this thing. Look, uh, welcome to the South. Guys, episode 14, I can't believe, I said episode 100, David's going to be a billionaire. We all know that. But we're yeah. at 14, okay? How many more, David, let's, away? 86 away. Yeah, we're 86 away. So David away. being a billionaire. So, um... If you don't know this, thank you for, for joining us in the Silas Cast. All we talk is money. All we talk is money. We'll get that theme song back up again. We had some copyright issues. Uh, maybe I'm revealing too much, but hey, I'm full disclosure with you guys. But I own the song. We're going to be okay. All we talk is money. Back on the grind. We'll have that for you next week. My name's Adam Sosnick. I'm here to help you build your wealth and save that money. That's what we do. That's all we do. That's, That's all, all you we do. do. You're um, like, no, that's not so much what I do. That's what you do. I'm learning to be that. Um, you are learning. And I appreciate everybody being with us who is also learning. Like, what do I say every week? You got pen and paper? That's exa- I was about yeah, to say, notes, I was, I was taking notes. Look, what I say every week, most people are most people. Most people are broke, unfortunately. More, people make money. Don't get me wrong. I just did an Instagram post on this. Uh, they make money. They just can't keep the money. Seinfeld keep reservation it. right Anyone there. Can just Anyone can just make the money. Anyone can just make the money. But can you keep Can you hold on to the money? <laughs> can just and just... Anyway, so you guys, you know, clearly you're here because you want to be value-tamed. Clearly, we're at value-tainment here. You want to get better with your money. You don't have time to read all the financial stuff that's going on in the news. You want to come here and get some value, but also you want to be tamed. That's why David's here. Hell yeah. That's why David's here. So I'm here to bring you the most value-taining money stories of the week. So again, most people are most people, most people won't take the time to come out to a show like this. So we appreciate you guys being here. As always, David's going to be moderating the comments. We see what's going on. We appreciate you here. We're going to look back at the end of this episode and answer your questions. A lot of times we do a Q&A from my Instagram. We'll do a little of that. But we're also going to be looking at your questions right there. I see some people wondering why I'm going to Travis Scott concerts. I've been to a handful. They're like, what's an old guy like this, 40 years old, doing a Travis Scott's concert? Well, maybe I went to one when I was 33. You ever think of that? <laughs> guy's been around for a little while. Um, but we're here to get smarter with money and talk about current trends, current topics, you know, pop culture, anything related to money. It's not going to be about Travis Scott. You know, like I, what I always say, 50% of finance is knowledge. I didn't know about that. Holy moly. I, okay, cool. That's good to know. All right, all right. That, that's a good way to think. Cool, cool, cool. The other 50 is your behavior. How are you acting? Do you know that you need to save money, but let me go hit the club this weekend, and then you end up putting the money on your credit card? So half knowledge, half behavioral. This is what, we, this is what it is. Um, but let's get ready to talk some money, David. Let's do it. I already got people in the comments uh, that want me to become a, a millionaire earlier than the 100th episode. <laughs> uh, Respect. Tell me invest in uh, certain coins. I, I'm writing all this down, guys. <laughs> the, your knowledge your knowledge curve when money is exponential growth right now oh absolutely exponential Abs- growth absolutely i could fire away things that you just bang i didn't know what that was boom bing bing bitcoin Dude, yeah the roi here's what's going on index funds stock market budgeting 50 30 20 80 20 well you didn't know about any of this stuff. i didn't know about any of those numbers you were just going through life loosey-goosey style just swiping the card swiping the card yeah, now take it Ready to be a billionaire. All right, let's get ready to talk some money. Thank you guys for being here. Let's talk money. Um, this first segment that we're going to talk about isn't so much your money. It's more your behavior in order to 100%. make that money. All right? So sometimes the best way to make money is to change your behavior or your antics in some case. So it's not always about making the right investment that's going to make you rich. Sometimes it's acting the right way. Mm. Some people just don't know how to act right. Mm, change so, attitude. Change your attitude, change your lifestyle. Gotcha. So that's what this first story is going to talk about right here. There are certain undeniable characteristics, undeniable, that separate the great ones from just the average Joes. Okay? Mm. We all saw the movie Dodgeball. Somehow the average, average Joes, you know, won the Dodgeball contest. That's not going to happen in real life. <laughs> just so you know. That was a movie. What was ben the opposite, Stiller, Jim? 
The Cobra, who was it? Yeah, the Cobra guys. Globo Gym. Globo Gym, yeah, yeah, yeah. The reality is you want to be, financially, you want to be Globo Gym without the asshole, you know, put the asshole on the side. (laughs) But you do want to be healthy, wealthy, happy, fit, at nice locations. You don't want to be necessarily working out at Average Joe's Gym. However, there are certain characteristics, undeniable characteristics, David, that separate the great ones from the average ones. So here are the five ways, five ways to become a top former performer at your company. Here are the top ways to become a top performer at your company. And this is um, across all sectors. You might say, I'm in real estate. This doesn't apply to me. I'm in production world. I'm a lawyer. This doesn't apply. No, no, no. No I'm a doctor. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Sales, 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 especially. So if you're an entrepreneur, you've got sales for sure. Here are the top five ways to become a top performer at your company. Numero uno, number one, for my non-Spanish speakers, (laughs) Is <laughs> you have to be curious. I was curious about Spanish in school. There you, you go. Know, there it was. You, know? you have to be curious. AKA, you actually have to give up. What? Like, you have to be like, oh man, tell me more about this. All right, I didn't really sure about that, but you know, I was unsure, but tell me more. Tell me more. I, I gotta ask you. Know, you know, what I always say the best thing with sales is asking yeah, yeah. questions. Everyone around you is not like, and they'll let you know, all right, dude, you, you've asked, yeah. you're, a, you're allowed allotment of questions today. But for the most part, if you're the new, new person at your company or if you've been there for a while, asking questions, giving a <laughs> will separate yeah. you from the people who are just kind of there to do a job, right? And speaking of that, you know, every job has a job description. Here are the job description. Now that's the basic. That's entry level. All right, these are my things. But if you actually want to do more than what your job description is, right. that's also a form of being curious. How can I help more? What more can I do? What more value can I bring? Hey, you know what it's lacking over here? I was wondering why this um, why this production over here that we're doing over here is really the views are down on this or the, the business accounts is, is down on this. So maybe there's something like those types of questions, that curiosity only benefits you. That's number one, all right? So ask questions. Like I always say, you have to actually give a what? You have to. You have to have, ma- and if you don't have interest in what you're doing, we've all been there. Yeah. You don't have interest in what you're doing. You're kind of lallygagging. You don't really want to be there. That's not where you want to be long term. If you have major interest and you have major curiosity of what you're doing, boom, that's step number one. One attribute. Give a shit level has to go up. Give a shit level has to go up. I love that. That's David right there. Number two, you have to be a sponge. Mm. There's a lot of SpongeBob SquarePants out there, you know, fans out there. You're you're a big SpongeBob fan? Yes, I do uh, indulge in the SpongeBob quotes. You gotta soak it in. Mm. You gotta be a sponge. You gotta. I need soak it. in the knowledge. So a lot of times you're gonna get hired, whatever job. Or if you've been on your job for a little while, they're gonna say, do this, do this, do this, do this. You need to soak it in, mm. learn, learn on the job, and be a quick learner. That's the way. Three months, six months in, boom. All right, now I'm in. I'm in charge of this that, whole thing. Yeah, that ties in with give a shit level. Your give a shit level goes up. The faster you soak things up, the faster. You see what's going on here. Mm-hmm. You see what you give a shit. You're curious. You care. All of a sudden, you're soaking knowledge in. Yeah. You're an expert. You're an expert. You're becoming a student of the game. Right. Your knowledge goes up. Your expertise goes up. Now you're somebody. Now you're becoming an expert at what you do in less than a year. What's the... because you give a shit. You're curious, and you're soaking it in. Right. So what's step, it what's step three? Well, I'll get there. So step three, while you're being curious and while you're soaking it all in, you have to be able to take feedback. Ooh. This is the hard part. This yeah. is where, this is where people's where feelings people, mm-hmm. get hurt. It's where most people you're on fail. the job. You care. You want to be there. And um, you know, you're soaking it in. You're improving. You're helping the team or so you think. And now it's time for your six-month review. Mm-hmm. Or now it's time for an annual review. And people tell you, you know, well, here's some feedback for you. Or it might not even be a review. It might just be some feedback yeah. on something you're working on. Random day. This, will, this is what separates emotionally yep. the good from the great. Because regular people are not going to be able to respond well to feedback, especially bad feedback. Mm. Obviously, everyone, hey, great job. Cool, cool, cool. But th- th- there's also, if everyone tells you you're doing a great job and they don't tell you what to improve, you'll never improve. Right. That's something else to think about. But feedback is at the very foundation of every relationship. Mm-hmm. Whether it's business, whether it's you know boyfriend and girlfriend, marital relationships, friendships, being able to take feedback. Hey, by the way, um, you snore like crazy when you sleep. 
<laughs> I, I can't stand it. Oh, <laughs> shit. I didn't know. Hey, hey by the way, so your desk area is an absolute nightmare. Messy as hell. Your, your work is great, but you're a slob. Okay. Some feedback right there. Um, by the way, you're late. You're five minutes late to every business meeting. This is a horrible look. What are you going to do about it? But I'm awesome. I'm the number one salesperson. Are you, are you open to feedback? That's a question that actually PBD sometimes uses. Are you open to feedback? Who the hell says no? No, I'm not open. No, yeah, of course. Not open yeah, to any no, feedback no, no. whatsoever. So this is what sep separates the top performers from just your average Joes that we're talking about mm -hmm. is the way that they react to feedback. We all know people that just can't take, you know, can't take it when somebody just essentially assault, insults them. There's logical, and hey, man, let me just... So, you know, Jeff Bezos had a quote. He says, you know, listen and be open, right? But they can tell you, you know, what to do, but they can't tell you who you are. Does that make sense? Because the action that they're, they're referring to when they're giving you feedback is just about your job. Right. It's not about you as a person exactly. necessarily, right? Yeah, we had Kenny Valencia here in the comments say, constructive criticism is so important. Don't take it personally. Exactly. Exactly. There it is, Kenny, mm -hmm. for the W, for the win. Constructive criticism. That's feedback. Yeah. So sometimes it can hurt. We get it. You know, PBD, basically, when I talked about being five minutes late to a meeting, that's me. PBD, on the 100th episode, he's like, dude, you're, you're 20 minutes late. I know, I had a thing going on. Unacceptable. I had to own it. I had felt like shit in that meeting. But, you know, we talked it out. He understood why. But no excuses. That's my, that's my bet. Yeah. Right. You have to be open for feedback. It's not all good. I get a lot of feed, good feedback. Believe me, I've got some hate on PBD podcast. All good. I'm open to feedback. It, I, it, it might change what I do, but it's not going to change who I am. Right. Does that make sense? A hundred percent. Okay. Number four. So, number four. Um, you have to be a double threat. What am Ooh. I talking about here? Double threat. You got to be got to both ways. Shout out so, to Mario Aguilar. Sorry to interrupt you. That's yeah. something he says all the time. Know enough to be dangerous. Ooh. So that's like, yeah, double threat. At least if this is where you're going with it. Just Maybe I am. Know enough to be dangerous know in enough. every field. Well, this is a, this is kind of like that, but this yeah. is this is meeting you in the middle there. Meet me in the middle. When I talk about being a double threat, you need to be able to grind independently. Like not uh -huh. have someone holding your hand just like, "Hey, here's your project. Go get them, bro." Boom, I'm off to the races. Cool, I'm grinding. But you also have to be able to work well with others, a.k.a. play well with others. So part one is you don't need any hand-holding. You need minimal guidance. You don't need to tell anybody looking over your shoulder telling you what to do. Yo, I got this. We're good. Number two is, all right, huddle up, team meeting. This is what I need everybody to do. If you can be both, you are very valuable to your company. Very valuable. Mm -hmm. I can do it on my own. I'm good. I got this. You know, give me a project. I'll be done with it by the end of the day, end of the week. Cool. Or, hey, team meeting. Everybody circle up. I'm running the meeting. Now we're I'm, I'm playing well with others. If you can do both. Some people only can do one. Hey, look, just give me a project. I'm going to just, you know, like a lot of the editors maybe here at Valuetainment or anywhere. There's a lot of introverts maybe that can work independently. A lot of extroverts work with, hey, what's up? Come on in. But to be able to, to balance both, being an introvert and extrovert, working well with others and working independently – Damn, your stock just went up. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts Double on that? Threat. Double threat. Double threat. Yeah, 100%. The lone okay. wolf or the, or the team leader. Can you Ooh, be both? I like. See, this is the insight that we're waiting on, David. The lone wolf. And my wolf pack became two. And then <laughs> you showed up, Doug. And I knew our wolf pack became three. Fantastic. Double threat right there. And last but not least, and this probably is the most important, because if you actually want to scale a company and take things to the next level, you have to empower the people around you. Empower to the people is what I'm talking about right here. This is the most critical. Why? Because the most important title that you could ever possibly have is not founder, is not CEO, it's not coach, it's not player, it's leader. Yeah. If you lead others, man, sky's the limit. And if you can groom talent that we talked about hey let's groom talent here like pbd he brought me on he's like all right i i want to i want to do a media company the media company can't be pbd company it's valuetainment all right so if i'm gonna have a media company i need to have other talent all right let me bring in adam he knows his stuff about personal finance pop culture boom let me bring in the biz doc he's bringing in capital and investment that's his thing danielle DiMartino martino booth she's bringing in 
economics, doing her thing, lovely lady. Let's bring in Gerard. Boom, he's politics. Let's bring in Phil Heath. He's got, you're collaborating. You're bringing in others. You're playing well with others, and you're empowering your people. Uh, nothing is more important than being a leader. So, David, you are now becoming kind of a leader around here. How does it feel? Because as I'm saying this, I'm thinking, all right, what are people, number one, if you're in the audience, you should be saying, I always try to give my, the, the audience a challenge. It's, this, isn't, this is interactive stuff. There's a reason that we're doing this live. There's a reason that we're looking at your comments. There's a reason that I ask questions. Is so you, whoever it is, let, pick a name. Who is it? Lee, there he is. Louis Alpha, you're thinking to yourself, all right, cool, I'm here to learn, I'm here to be entertained. But when Saz asks a question and says, hey, of these five things, where can I improve? Like me, I'm curious as hell. I'm constantly asking questions. People tell me, mm -hmm. dude, enough of the questions. Number two, love being a sponge. I'm, I'm, I'm around yeah. PBD, I'm around smart people. I'm asking questions. I give up. I'm soaking it all in. Number three, taking feedback. Not easy to do. Not easy to do. But I take it. I understand it. Not emotional. I'm definitely more logical than emotional these days. But sometimes the emotions get the best of us. Number four, for sure, for sure, for sure, I'm a double threat. Are you? I can grind. I can go to my office three hours. Cool. Get my shit done. Or boom, now it's time for, time for a team meeting. Play well with others. So where are you at on that one? And number five, empower the people. This is something that I'm working on right now. Trying to become a better leader. Trying to empower others around me. So there's other leaders, grooming talent. Um, here's what I'll say on this. These things, you know, we, it's a listicle. Five things to be a better employee. Five things. They make it seem so simple because oftentimes it kind of is. Yep, Th these totally are, this, is. Is, this is some basic stuff but it all it all starts with that first that curious and give a shit level yes if, you if you're give, good yes you don't care if you're just going in nine to five let me just knock going this out through of my the day. motions like if, if if your job becomes a thing where it's like an obstacle and you just have to do it and then you can live your life that's after five mm -hmm. and you're gonna be miserable that's right. how you end up like oh pat calls leave. it the 459 club it's 459 i can't wait to, dude yeah. i see you david you're here you're here till eight o'clock nine o'clock at night yeah why because you give a shit right or mario will beat you maybe i mean that's but true. but no like because you give a shit that's yeah. important in my job that i you know my financial career that i've been at me being here i've always had a give a shit factor you know those people that's like, I don't really care. Whatever. Whatever, bro. Yeah. That only gets you so far. Yeah. At some point, you need to give a help. Mm -hmm. Now, if you can't get ahead, if you're like, you know what? I'm grinding. I'm hustling. You know, I'm trying to make the money. I'm trying to improve. I got the career. Um, maybe you're not doing one of these five things. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Look in the mirror and say, you know what? I really don't play well with others. <laughs> I, I hate people. Or I, I, hate, I hate the people I work with. Maybe that's something you need to prove upon. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, because if you're actually doing these things consistently, that's the key. Consistently, consistently right? Because yep. you're doing it. It's not just one day. It's day in and day out, year mm -hmm. after year after year. There's no way you can lose. Absolutely not. This yeah. is, this is this, again, I started this topic with this isn't money advice. This is career advice. This is how you can make yourself a better person to the company top to grow top performer of the company yeah. so that's it final thoughts david or let's move on no i 100 percent agree it's discipline and this is the recipe follow it but be disciplined mm. and that's it's 100 percent. how much do you care how okay. much do you actually care i worked at a bank i don't want to work at a bank that's not my thing but i was miserable every day and then i thought why and so I started giving a shit, and I started going through all the manuals, and I started mm. learning everything I could. I started enjoying it, because I started to become good at it. So if, when you become, and you understand things, and you're personally involving yourself in it, and become good at it, then you start enjoying it. So definitely, top performer equals happy life. Nice. Great story. All right. Thank you for that. And um, you guys figure out where you need to improve. That's my challenge to you guys. <clears throat> Write it down. Only you're going to see it. We don't, you don't want to send it in. Nothing. But think. Are these five things? Where can I improve? All right, let's now turn our attention to a field of education that gets a very bad rep, mm. and that is college. Oh. Universities. I'm a college man. I'm, a, I'm an Ivy League man. Um, college gets a bad rap these days, and I'm actually one of the people that actually sometimes gives college a bad rap. You know, I have my issues with college, exorbitant costs, student loans, worthless majors. But certain colleges are just worth it. What do we call these things, David? When you pay for something, you get something better. And, uh, that's a R. Return on investment. That's my guy. Yeah. So anyway, so college does get a bad rap these days, but certain colleges 
definitely produce what I would call financial winners. So let's talk about this. Um, certain colleges, let's go down the list here. Ha- these colleges have produced the most billionaire alumni. Okay? Wow. So if you're looking for a college and you're saying, oh, where should I go to college? Maybe you start with which colleges produces the billionaires. Yeah. Good luck getting into that. Good luck getting into those. <laughs> Good luck getting in. Shoot for the stars, right? Um, and uh, some of them are the ones you would suspect on this list, and some maybe not as much. Shoot for the stars, and you'll land amongst community college. (laughs) (laughs) Shoot for the stars, and you'll land amongst community college. Well played. So, David, uh, take a guess what is number one. Harvard. Harvard. (laughs) It is. (laughs) Is it really? All right, uh, in Cambridge, Massachusetts, they have, so this list is based on how many billionaires, not so much the amount that these billionaires are worth, but we're going to give you those fun facts as well. And then hopefully you'll understand, okay, a little bit more about the colleges, learn some stuff, and I'll give you some takeaways at the end. So number one is Harvard with 29 billionaires who have graduated from college. These, 29 billionaires. Exactly. So these, this list is all who have graduated. So there'll be a fun fact here as well. So alumni include Steve Ballmer. He was uh, one of the, the CEO of Microsoft at one point. He was Bill Gates' replacement for many. Now he owns the Los Angeles Clippers. They can't get over the hump, but he's mm-hmm. there going crazy. You got the Winklevoss twins, famous for you know getting Facebook stolen from them by Mark Zuckerberg in Harvard, right? So they've since, since gone on to become crypto billionaires um, and they've created Gemini so I've actually had the opportunity to have dinner with those guys drinks with those guys at the Miami Soho house those guys are actually pretty cool don't be shocked if you see them here on value tainment that's just a little heads up wow. we'll see um, a little tease. yeah a little tease right there and then you have Lloyd Blankfein he's the former Goldman Sachs CEO Goldman Sachs arguably the best investment bank in the world um, and then on top of that, they're not they're they're number one, and they don't even have two of the top five richest people in the world on the list, and that's Bill Gates and Mark Zuckerberg combined for two hundred and fifty billion dollars worth of net worth. So com- so Harvard's total net worth of billionaires minus those two is two hundred and seven billion. If you add those two, they're approaching four hundred and fifty seven billion, almost five hundred billion dollars. That's Harvard. Okay, I'm a Harvard man. I'm so, from Harvard, darling. Exactly. That's Cambridge. Now, number two, if I give you a list, uh, if I give you ten guesses, I don't know if you would guess number two. I really don't. It's uh, not a bad school. I mean, it's a fantastic school. FIU. FIU, Florida International, down here. FAU here in Boca. That's not it. Um, the answer is, it's University of Pennsylvania. Well, I never in Philly. Yeah, never right. You would probably said that. Yale, Harvard, Stanford. Yeah, honestly, another Ivy League. Pennsylvania. And you'll see the reason why. They, they have the second most number of billionaires, 28. And their total net worth, which is one of the largest on this list, is $285 billion. Huh. And famous alumni include former President Donald Trump and current richest man on the planet, Elon Musk. Elon Musk that? and Donald Trump went to college together. Not together. They went to about twenty. They were roommates. College. They were <laughs> roommates. That's crazy. Twenty years difference. Now, of this two hundred eighty-five billion, of the, exactly of this two hundred eighty-five billion, Elon probably has ninety-five percent of that. <laughs> Donald Trump probably has a couple billion. But that's number two on the list, and the famous business school that uh, people attend at Penn is Wharton. Wharton. Are you familiar with Wharton? Wharton. I went to Wharton. Darling. I went to Wharton and I got a business degree and now I'm worth a billion dollars. Congratulations. And now I have student loans. Number I- three on this list, and thank you for um, for joining along with us right now. Number three is none other than Stanford in California, Oops. Northern California. Billionaires, 28, same as, it's tied. as Penn. However, they have $150 billion less. So that's why they're third on this list. Total net worth is $125 Billion famous alum- alumni include co-founders of Robinhood, oh. big talk of the town. That's Vlad Tenev and Baiju Bhatt. They both graduated from Stanford. Um, a lot in the news these days, Robinhood. I'm sure we have a lot of uh, fans or friends or followers, a lot of Fs right there, that um, use Robinhood. And then in addition to that, there's the co-founder of Yahoo. His name is Jerry Yang. These guys all went to Stanford. Numero Cuatro, number four for our Spanish speakers out there, is Yale. 
Oh. Yale University, wow. number four. David, for $10 billion, what state is Yale located in? Uh, Connecticut. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> well played, David. Woo! Well played, David. He had the answers to the test all along. All along. Did you know that or no? No. <laughs> <laughs> Yale has 21 billionaires. And they have a total net worth of $140 billion. The alumni include uh, Mars, the heirs to the Mars candy fortune, the Mars wow. family, right? So we're talking about Mars bars, and I'm sure they own like all the candy in the world, whatever they yeah. own. They just probably, their net worth just increased substantially after Halloween. Uh, you have Joe Tsai. He is the uh, co-founder of Alibaba. And then he's also the current owner of the Brooklyn Nets. He went he's, to Yale? He's a Yale grad, yes. Huh. Huh. Didn't know that. And then in addition to that, you have a guy called Stephen Schwartzman, which I would like to call Steve, Uncle Steve. Uncle Steve. Uh, he's the CEO of Blackstone, which is basically the biggest investment firm in the, in the globe right now. So Blackstone. So that is Yale. Number five, this is coming out of left field. Technically, actually, it's coming out of East Asia, is... Mumbai University in India. You didn't see that one oh, coming, did you? No. No, God. they're number five. They've produced 20 billionaires. My so nationalism India. came out. Yeah. I only thought it would be state. You thought it was all just America. Oh, yeah. India taking over. We're so worried about China. Look at India. <laughs> Look at India producing billionaires. Uh, they have their, fa their most famous alumni is a man called Mukesh Ambani, one of the top richest men in the world, certainly the richest man in India. India, and quite possibly the richest man in all of Asia. Uh, his company is called Reliance. They're a conglomerate, tele telecommunications, oil manufacturing. I don't know what they don't do. But number five is Mumbai University of India. We are oh, now yeah. at the top five on the list. Let's rattle down the last five, and let's get to the point here. Number six is Cornell. My business partner at my financial firm went to Cornell. He loves talking about how he went to Cornell. I say, you know how... You know that Mark, my, my business partner, Mark, yeah. you know how we know that Mark went to Cornell? Because he would just full on come out and tell you, I went to Cornell and that's, this is why you should listen to me. That's like Andy okay, cool. from The Office. That's the whole uh, thing. What do you say? That's, it, oh, that's his thing? Yeah, he just constantly reminds you that he's from, we went to Cornell University. Okay, so there's a theme here. Yeah, that's so funny. Uh, that's Okay. Are we live, guys? We've had some technical issues. Guys, let me know in the comments if we're back. Sorry about that. This is, this is what happens when you go live. You, not everything's going to be perfect. Okay. I see that we're back. I see that we're back. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, all right. That all right. Happened. We're good. That's we're never good. happened before. It's okay. We've got to roll with the punches. First David, time. are you receptive to feedback? Yeah, go ahead. Give me... What the hell happened? No idea. Our, our system just kind of decided uh, we, they were over the whole... Did we talk trash about one of the schools? And we did talk trash about um, Cornell. Oh, da, there's your buddy. The seat went down. Yeah, the internet crashed. Down. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> All right. Anyway, we All are right. back. Thank you guys for bearing with us. I said we did lose some people, but we're back. So thank you. I did see some uh, a comment saying, Yo, Saz, I got hit up in the Instagram DMs by a fake account impersonating you. Saz talks Monet. Money spelled M O N A Y. Yeah. Um, listen, there are fakes out there. There are just legitimate scumbags out there. They're gonna obviously try to impersonate people out there that obviously talk about money and that have a following. Don't fall for fakes. I'm never gonna ask you for Bitcoin in the DM. It's never gonna happen. Okay. That's exactly where these guys. Hey, what up, bro? You open to uh, financial coaching? Cool. Send me a couple of uh, Ethereum and Bitcoin. Don't do it. Um. Anyway. So we're back. Where did we leave off, David? We Cornell were talking University. about we were talking about Cornell, Robert F. Smith, private equity guy. We talked about a new guy that was on this list. You wouldn't know him, but you would know what he did. His name is Robert Langer. And you recognize that name? No, I don't. Either do I. And either is probably most of America, but this is why we're going to pay attention to his name. He's a scientist with 3% stake in a company called Moderna. Oh. Uh... 
Oh, Ooh. I believe you Ooh. might have been familiar with the Moderna shot these Ooh. days. Uh, more familiar with the other one, the good one, the Pfizer. The Pfizer, okay. The good one. But I, mean. um, <laughs> I know you have strong feelings on this. But basically, he became a billionaire this year because he was uh, one of the main scientists mm. at Cornell University in Spanish Harlem, New York. You ever been there? Uh, no, I haven't been to New York. Actually, I'm going for the first time. Why do, uh, I asked week. you about New York. You used a British accent. Because I that? thought you did one, so I just copied. I said you've make... been to New York. Oh, is that oh, is that a New York accent? Oh, okay. Maybe not anymore. <laughs> oh, you've uh, been to New York. You've been to New York. <laughs> All right, so that's number six. Number seven um, is none other than UCLA. Oh. You didn't expect that. Los Angeles, California, University of California, Los Angeles. I'm not surprised, though. Really? I don't think so. Well, wait till you hear who's on this list. Okay. 15 billionaires worth 58 billion. Famous alumni include George Lucas, the creator of yeah. Star Wars. Yeah, I actually knew that. Not yeah. bad. Not bad. Another guy who actually I think is a great CEO. His name is Mark Benioff. He's the uh, CEO founder of Salesforce. Salesforce mm -hmm. now has merged with Slack. Slack that we're using here. Boom. You can thank UCLA for that. Thank you, UCLA. Technically, he didn't start um, Slack, but anyway, Actually, you get the point. To thank him. Yeah, exactly. Well, <laughs> keep it. Stay on your toes, buddy. You never know. Number eight, number eight on this list is the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, commonly known as M MIT. You know how far Harvard is from MIT? They're both in Massachusetts. Right. How you know? Oh so yeah, 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 yeah. How far do you think? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say ten miles. They are five minutes away. Wow. From each other, like you could walk from Harvard to MIT. I didn't know that they're also in Cambridge. So mm. that concentration of Boston, I gotta tell you, one of my best friends. We're gonna talk about him today. Huge in the crypto game. Huge in the crypto game. We're gonna talk about how I got into crypto, how I got into Bitcoin. Some advice for you guys out there. He went to a little school called Tufts. I'm like, oh, you think you're a Tufts guy? <laughs> That's like my thing with him. But it's also there in the Boston area, and it's a great, great school. Like Ivy League, maybe a little below it. But the schools in Boston are insane. So MIT, 14 billionaires with a total net worth of $104 billion. Famous alumni are the Koch brothers. You ever heard of the Koch brothers? They own Koch Industries, the one of the private, the the wealthiest private um, companies in the country. Ridiculous. I thought you were trying to get me to narc for a second. But no, I have not no, heard of them. No, K-O-C-H, the Koch brothers. Gotcha. And then more of more recent fame is the founder of FTX, the crypto platform. His name is Sam Bankman Freed, otherwise known as SBF. You ever seen this dude? No. Dude, I grew up in Miami. I go to Heat games. I have friends in the Heat. All that, all that, all that. My American Airlines Arena. He just came in, crypto billionaire status, renamed the entire Miami Heat American Airlines Arena to the FTX Arena. That's his oh, that's crypto his, fund. That's this guy? Ridiculous. You heard about this. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, why I oughta. Yeah, why I oughta. Exactly. Player, I don't yeah. know. But this guy's a super genius right here. Um, that's uh, MIT for you, all right? Super geniuses over here. Uh, number nine on this list is Columbia University in New York. Did I say Spanish Harlem in, in, uh, for Cornell? No, that's upstate New York. Yeah. Columbia is what's in Spanish Harlem, a little further north uh, New York style. My, one of my best friends is a dentist. Went there. Our uh, um, Robert HR went to Columbia. This is that where he went? Yeah. Robert HR. Does the guys have a last name around here? Just Robert HR. Robert HR. They produced uh, 11 billionaires with a total net worth of 41 billion. And their most famous alumni is the most winningest sports owner in the NFL. In the NFL. And that would be Bob Kraft of the Patriots. Oh. All I do is win, 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 win no matter win. what. Except for when Tom Brady goes to the Buccaneers. <laughs> now it's no matter what. So that's Bob Kraft. And number 10 on this list actually um, is Princeton University. Fun fact right here. Princeton is in New Jersey. Okay. okay. 11 billionaires, but they have the most amount of net worth on this list. So they have the least amount of billionaires, but they have the largest net worth on this list. And why do you think that is, why David? Is that? I don't know. Because not only did Jeff Bezos go there, his wife or ex-wife Mackenzie Bezos went there as well. And they have a collective net worth of however many hundred billion dollars. And that's why Princeton University has a full-on wow. net worth of $288 billion. They shouldn't account his, uh, Jeff Bezos' wife's money in there because that's Jay Bezo Jay <laughs> Jeff Bezos' money. Don't open up that can of worms, buddy. She earned it. They're, they cheated their way onto that list. And then uh, a little uh, 
little bonus round for you. Number 11, because they were actually the same amount of billionaires as Princeton, and we'll just give them a little shout-out. Uh, it's Cal Berkeley uh, up there in uh, Berkeley land of California. 11 billionaires, 82 billion famous alumni. Masayoshi, son of SoftBank. Gordon Moore, the co-founder of Intel. And if you like the DoorDash, there's the co-founder, Tony Yu of DoorDash. So then, anyway, those are the top schools that produce the top billionaires all across the country. David, here's the takeaway that I'm taking. Give it to me. Here's the takeaway. Now, we talked about this before. We talked about making sure you pick the right major for the right ROI. Right. When picking the college, maybe you find out, does it produce rich people? Does my college produce wealthy people? Yeah. Okay? You can go to any college in the world. You can get into whatever college. Does your college actually produce wealth? I say this all the time. College, great time, party, drinking beers, hanging out with chicks, having fun, going to the club. Are you actually getting ahead in life because of your college degree? Okay? It, it's such... I, I have such mixed feelings on college. I know you Because do. it's it, there's so many benefits, but there's also... So many negatives, so many takeaways, so many issues. So you're, college, you're, you're here with college. You Not never want to be here. <laughs> exactly. It's always you always here. You always want to be up here. I'm here with college because I yeah. did a lot of this in college. Oh, so did I. I did more of that than learning, partying. Okay, same. But yeah. no, actually, no, I take it back. I made a lot of great connections. There you and go. That's I how you got here. I get, I'll give you that. Anyway, if you can get into any of these schools, Harvard, no, they Yale, over, they over Penn, uh, you know, Mumbai, I'll move to India, become a billionaire, <laughs> Cornell, UCLA, MIT, Columbia, Princeton, Cal Berkeley, these companies, uh, these colleges produce billionaires. You got to seize the moment, take the opportunity. Yeah. But then also, listen, there's other schools. Mm -hmm. Michigan is a great school. Okay. Virginia is a great school. Emory or Georgia Tech in Atlanta is a great school. Um, there's a lot of great schools out there. So, you know. It's, I don't know how many, you know, 17 and 18 year olds are listening to the show or 16 year olds are thinking about college. Put in the chat. If you're 17 or 18 about to go to college, that is the most important decision that you're going to make up until you get married. At, you know, give or take, people are getting married at age 30 these days, whatever it is. College, that is a decision that, will, it, that impacts the rest of your life. Don't half ass, don't half step into college. Mm -hmm. Okay? Very important. You're going to come out with debt. You're going to come out with learning a lot. You're going to come out with connections. You're going to come out with EQ. It's not just IQ, how smart you are. EQ, emotional intelligence, how to get along with people. Yeah, Don't go in that corner. That's kind of weird. All right, cool. Hang out. Like, there's Dude. a lot you can learn in college. Yeah. It's a growing phase. It is. 18 to 22, you're, you're not an adult yet. You're kind of like a tender goose. You know, the goose is and loose. If, and if you spend it at home or hanging out with your local, I, a hundred, I, this is coming from a guy that's 50K in student loan debt. Mm -hmm. Go to college. Go to college, you learn something, and you get a lot of life experience. Boom. There Do it, it. All right. Uh, hard to argue with young David over there. So anyway, if college wasn't for you or if you just got out of college, let's get into our next story, and it's regarding getting a new job. Hey. So if you're looking for a job, listen up. This segment is for you. Okay? So these days, you know, everyone's familiar. That people are quitting. People are getting fired. People are moving their jobs. It's the great resignation. It's the great reset. It's the great reshuffle. Great, 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 great. Reset, reset, reshuffle, re all that. Okay? But eventually, you need to land somewhere. You can't just be looking for a job or job hopping year after year after year after year. That's not a good look. Yeah. You need to settle down somewhere. Yeah. Okay? So now is the time to obviously make your moves. Get a raise. Get a better job. Figure it out. This is a great reset, reshuffle. This is one of the benefits of COVID is now sort of the employees have a lot of power these days. You say, look, I'm getting unemployment. You think I'm going to come work to you for less than, you know, for unemployment? I don't, There's a lot, of, a lot of things are happening these days. So you know who actually had some very strong feelings on this? When I saw this article, I said, Let's have this gentleman weigh in. Are you familiar with Mr. Wonderful from Shark Tank, David? Yes, I love Mr. Wonderful. You love Kevin Mr. Wonderful. Kevin O'Leary. He's actually worth about $400 billion. Yeah. So when he speaks about- What college did he go to? Find that out. FIU. Did he, he didn't go to FIU. He's from <laughs> Canada. <laughs> I think he went to the like, University of Toronto or something. McGill. Okay. Find that out while I'm talking. So I, I guarantee you it's somewhere in Canada. All right. University of Ontario. That's my guess. Okay. So he opened up about- um, Getting a new job these days. Company, yeah. uh, how companies basically operate. Listen, this guy's um, purchasing companies left and right. He's opening up companies, investing companies. Uh, he knows a thing or two about well, you know, what type of employees 
can make a company work well. You got an answer for me? Yeah, I got an answer. He received an honors bachelor's degree in environmental studies and psychology from the University of Waterloo. Waterloo. Canada, bro. Yep. And then you got uh, another thing at the University of Western Ontario. Ont- didn't I say University of Ontario? You did. It Sauce just wasn't talks the Western money. one. I know he's from Canada. Sauce talks fast. They're really nice people up there in Canada. So he says, look, you know, he's got a lot of financial advice, a lot of money stuff, a lot of investments, a lot of stuff he's doing on Shark Tank. But he says, this is the one red flag that I see this. Boom. Antenna goes up, high alert. I throw your resume Right into the garbage can. I said, oh, oh damn. God. This guy ain't even giving it a second look. He said, this is the biggest red flag on your resume. He says he sees this going straight in the garbage. Boom. Basura. What is he it? says, the one red fl- front flag above all is candidates who are bouncing all over the place. That in the last two years have been at four different jobs. <sighs> he said, that is numero uno. Uh-uh. Ain't happening. Ain't hiring this person. Red flags all over this person's resume. Let me get into it. He says, if an, ap- if an applicant's resume shows them holding multiple jobs over the past couple years, I simply put that thing right in the trash. He's not even going to look at you. I, no, no, no. It's like the fat, the fat girl, the ugly girl, drunk girl at the end of the bar. Sorry. <laughs> I went there. Sorry. I'm sure yeah. you're a great person. I put just, it right in the trash. Yeah, right in the trash can. <laughs> Basura. I'm sorry. Um, and he goes on to say, companies don't like it because they invest in you let's right. talk about that mm-hmm. so if you're going to leave them after a few months it's an absolute total waste of money this is per kevin o'leary you know there's onboarding there's training there's getting you up to speed if you work remotely they're sending you equipment all that so he says when you apply to a new job you need to be prepared to invest your time into that company now, and then he says something here which i actually kind of disagree with i've agreed with him up to this point up to this point he says okay. you need to have a mental commitment whether you like the job or not, you need to stay there for at least two years. You have to have a minimum of a 24-month commitment. So hold on. If you don't like the job because Kevin O'Leary thinks you should stay there for two years, you need to stay there? I actually disagree with that. I disagree with that. If you hate yeah. the job, get the hell out of there. I agree. But find the job that you want to be at. The goal is to have less jobs on your resume than more jobs on your resume. You know the last time I've updated my resume? 15 years ago, because I've been at the same financial firm for 15 years. Mm. And when I came to Value Tainment, they're like, send me a resume. I'm like, you don't need a resume. <laughs> anyway, whatever. <laughs> the point is this. Sometimes less is more. Quality jobs over quantity jobs. You ever see that they, um, someone's resume, and over like the last five years, there's like 15 jobs? It's like, dude, that's, that's not a good look. Right. That doesn't help you. Yeah. Okay. I see these guys just well. They might, you guys might need to update your resume after some of these issues that we're having today, there, fellas. <laughs> um, anyway, so highlight the number of companies, the companies you're at for one to two years, not three to six months. Even if you were at a great company for three months, don't put on your resume. It didn't work out well. Gotcha. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, totally. Because above all, you got to understand something. Above all, I learned this from BizDoc companies want loyalty. They want to know that you're not going anywhere. They not. They don't want to know that you're just looking at them as a platform to get ahead three, six months, year, and then boom, move on, put it on the resume. And they've spent all this time onboarding you, and then you're out the door. Companies want loyalty, right? Yeah. So, and even if you're going to go get a raise, this is what some talk, talked about. The, uh, talked about the biz doc. If you're going to go get a raise, you need to convey, hey, look, I don't want to go anywhere. Okay, I, we have to have this conversation. I, I'm looking for a raise. I got to tell you, I've done some research. Companies in the, do what I do in a certain field are currently paying X, Y, and Z. I don't want to go anywhere. God forbid something happens, you get fi- I get fired or the company goes under. That's my market value. I don't want to go anywhere. I want to be here conveying loyal, uh, loyalty. With that being said, what can we do? Right? That's right. the type of conversation to, to, to have regarding um, the loyalty conversation. You have to convey loyalty. Because basically, basically his point is this. I don't want to waste my time with you if you're only going to be here for three to six yeah, months. Exactly. You're no, a waste of absolute time. Yeah. Even a year. Like, what's exactly. the point of putting all of this effort into someone? Exactly. And you're going to leave in a year. So do you guys agree with Kevin O'Leary? Do you I, disagree? I, do you kind of bop? You kind of, there's parts of it. Like, the one part I didn't agree with Kevin O'Leary on is if you hate your job, you still need to stick it out for two years. I don't think so. 
No, yeah, if if you absolutely yeah, like you're miserable and you've tried everything, you've tried going through the list of being you've a been top there for performer, six months and it's yes, and it's just not working out. I don't know. Then it's like yeah, choose your mental health over because you won't you know you right. won't learn anything. But I mean, yeah, I totally agree. If you're bouncing back, they invest some money. Not only that, they invest money into you, dude. Exactly. And like training, onboarding, systems, computer, benefits, all get of all this. that, and then and you're then out he, the door. He, yeah. No, so no, I totally no. understand where he's coming Next. from, but obviously. If it doesn't yeah. work out um, and you're not happy, you kind of got to keep it moving. But anyway, I think this is a, actually a great advice from Kevin O'Leary. That was a lot of value right there. Now let's flip the script. Let's get into a little bit of attainment Ooh. for the week right now. We're giving you that value and we're going to give you some of that attainment. Yeah. That value and then that attainment, David. And here we are. And here we mm. are. We're up top. We're mm. dancing. We're bopping. We're having a good time. So this is a story. I don't know how much value it is. But you're certainly going to be valuetained. You okay? uh, 100% So be it's now time for our wild money moves of Ooh. the week. And this week it features the Jackass crew. Yeah. You ever watch Jackass as a kid? Dude, growing up with my brother, we were obsessed with the Jackass crew. Like Jackass, Viva La Bam, Wild Boys featuring yes. Steve-O, South Floridian yes. native. He came out of the the, the uh, swamp. The, sw- uh, the swap shop here in Sunrise. Really? Yeah, he was a clown there, and then that's where they recruited him. Get out of here. Yeah. I didn't know that. He went. He um, grew up in Miami. He went to UM or something like that. Okay, we'll have to do our, some research on it. Find that answer. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. I remember watching Jackass, and I remember thinking, all right, it was hilarious, the Wild Boys, all this, but I'm like, what happens when the cameras go off? Oh, boy. I was so thankful. Above all is that I could just, the show was off. I could turn off the TV. And knowing that I didn't have to take the, these guys to the hospital. I didn't have to drive these guys yeah. or go in an ambulance because you know that shit was going on like that. You know there was broken bones, concussions, issues, limbs being torn off. You know that was yeah. happening. And part of the beauty of Jackass is not having to deal with these guys and be like, dude, my friend just got bit by a shark. <laughs> that kind of stuff. Exactly. Um, anyway, when I saw this article, and it has money, it has to do with money, insurance, uh, net worth. It has all the good stuff and the attainment. I wanted to get into this. It says, look, the jackasses are old now. You know, it's been 21 years since jackass started. Wow. Jackass is- 25. Yeah, exactly. Jackass, legally allowed to drink now. Uh, and they revealed how much money they've racked up on medical bills over the years. Take a guess. Do you want to guess or should I just get into it? It's already on the TV. Okay, there it is. The Jackass crew has racked up more than $24 million in medical bills alone Ridiculous. since being part of Jackass. Just medical bills. $24 million. So, you know, they paid quite the hefty price in bodily injury and absurd for their absurd antics. In fact, almost $25 million worth. Okay, so um, this is what I'm talking about. Their is- their medical bills could have gone to one of these colleges. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, because I always think these guys, they're fucking their lives up. They're messing their bodies up to, of unproportionate magnitude. And then you're just like, oh, we'll see you next week here at the Wild Boys. Yeah, yeah. The next week on Jackass. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope you're alive for that episode, Steve-O. I don't know how, I mean, well, rest in peace, Ryan Dunn. He passed away. Unrelated to that, by the way. How did he die? He was in, in a car accident. He was one of my I, favorite guys, too. I don't want to I don't want to say if he was, uh, was drinking and driving or anything like yeah. that, but he was okay. speeding. So he's the only one that, that's passed. Well, that's And unrelated to any of these stunts. That's crazy. It's just... um, so we're going to talk about who, who do you think of all the people of Jackass is at the top of this $24 Oof. million... The largest percentage went to one specific person. I want to say it's between eight two. million of the twenty-four. Eight million I want to say the 24. it's between two of them. It's either between Knoxville himself or our boy Steve O. Who are you yeah, going with? Buddy. Who, who's your guess? Oh, I'm gonna go with Steve O. And you would be dead wrong, Johnny no! Knoxville. Eight <laughs> mil, eight point six million dollars <laughs> worth smokes. in medical treatment. Uh, he's number one on the jackass injury list. There he is. On a bull. Um, he was bit by an alligator. He had a brain hemorrhage. He had a dozen broken bones and 16 concussions. Oh my 16 God. concussions. That's like there's 16 games in the NFL. I think there's actually 17 now. Typically 16. That's getting a concussion in every single game. <laughs> there's no way that his brain is working fine right now. Um, 
But Total. he's still like high functioning. He does other films. Yes. He like well, th- they're doing another Jackass. Are they? Okay. Yes. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about was it worth it to yes. ha- to mess up your body, right? To have all this medical treatment, all these concussions. Was it worth it in the end? Let's talk about this. Johnny Knoxville. By the way, all these guys are in their forties or fifties at this point. Yeah, I think they're in okay. Fifty. Johnny Knoxville is fifty years old. He is by far and away the wealthiest member of Jackass. Clearly, right? He's the main guy. Yeah. How much do you think he's worth? Oh, man. All those injuries have to be pay him a lot. Uh, I want to say a crazy number, like uh, $50 million. More. $75 million. Holy hell. Okay, and it's not even close, the rest of the crew, by the way, if I have you guess. Really? So, Less than a million? Point, I don't know about that. But um, yeah, we'll, we'll get into low. it. We'll get, no, that's that, more than a million. But- uh, the thing with him is that he did not make his money by getting kicked in the nuts and, and getting the ROI on a, on a scrotum punch or anything like that, okay? He, the majority of wealth came from, we talk about this all the time, owning his brand. Owning his brand. So he co- co- co-owns Dick House Productions. Good man. Great name right there. Uh, as well as his own separate company that he owns called Hello Junior. That's, that's a deal that has been signing uh, deals with Paramount Pictures for the last handful of years. He's made some money. Yeah. Dick House, Hello Junior, and Dick Johnny Dick. Knoxville, Paramount Pictures, 75 yeah. million. Dick House is responsible for all your cult favorites. Uh, Robin Big on MTV. Is it really? Um, yeah. Uh, um, ridiculousness. Wow. Uh, there's a Rob bunch Zerdeck. of. Yeah. Viva La Bam. I think all the other like, Jack Off Jackoff spinoffs have been part Jack of. Off. Yeah. Dick well, speaking of Viva Jack La Bam, <laughs> he is second on this list. How old do you think Bam is? No, oh, he looks terrible now, but he's probably yeah, 46, 40. He's 42. Ah. He's 2 years older than me. He looks 10 years older than me. Yeah, 20 years no. older than me. He looks rough, so that's shut up. But Viva La Bam, great great show. He yeah. slap his mom and his father and his uncle in the slap face or whatever, yeah, yeah, slap, yeah, yeah. all that crazy stuff. He is worth how much? Uh, 20 million dollars. Not million bad, bags, Bam. Not bad. Should spend a million on it on your health. Health is wealth, buddy. Um, and then you have the rest of the crew. You have Wee Man Wee Man, yep. the little dude, yep. age 48 now. Wow. He's worth $8 million. Not bad, little Wee Man right wow. there. You have Chris Pontius, who's actually kind of like my favorite. I think he's got the ponytail, blonde hair. Chris Pontius, yes. Yeah. He's worth $4 million. He's age 47. You got Preston Lacey, who's the big fat guy, yeah. age 52. He's the oldest one. He's how worth about, $3 million. The other guy, uh, Pontius? 47. Oh, wow. And then last on this list in terms of net worth no. is Stevo with two yeah. and a half million. Yeah, dude. And he's got the most <laughs> messed up. Listen to C- uh, uh, Stevo's inspirational story right here. He says, "After my first year, after getting mangled and mauled and all messed up, after taxes, I only made fifteen hundred dollars. My first <laughs> season of Jackass. Okay, think about that, J- Stevo. Fifteen hundred dollars. He says he got paid per." bit per per sketch he says if it was dangerous and i got hurt they gave me 500 bucks but if it was only like kind of funny i only got 200 bucks (laughs) dude know your worth steve-o know your worth steve-o was also in a very dark place during that time yes but oh my god what you got no no no, i'm saying that's insane yes um pull up some of these jackass guys i don't know you can scroll through here anyway Again, this is more of a value, uh, a, a value. This is more of a attainment type of story. But th- it's it's interesting what happened with these guys. Again, you said it's all fun and games. Uh, Jackass, the Wild Boys, um, obviously everything that they did on MTV, um, Viva La Bam. These guys literally put their bodies on the line. These guys got beat up worse than NFL players. Yeah, beat up way worse way than a lot of NFL players. Than right? any, uh, most UFC fighters. Yes. They, got, they basically <laughs> did a UFC fight every week is basically what happened. So I guess that's, that's probably a good way to look at these guys, that they are athletes. So what I always tell athletes is you got to understand, you're going to start m- making money at age 20, let's say, age 21. Dude, by the time you're 35, 40, you're done making all your money. And that's if you're the best, best, best. You're not playing to 40 if you're not the best. Yeah. Average NFL career is like three to five years. Average NFL NBA career – Five years ago, so on and so forth. So if you make five, ten million in your first, you know, years of working, that money needs to last you the rest of your life. So what's my point? This money, Bam's twenty million, Wee Man's eight million, four million, Preston Lacey, three million, Steve O, two and a half million. 
dude, this needs to last them a very long time. They're not yeah. doing what they did 20 years ago. Yes. Okay, the yeah. body age ain't aging that well. This money needs to last. This is the ultimate story about risk versus reward. We talk about investing. You know, investing is time and compound interest. The more money you can make, the higher rate of return has to do with your risk and reward. Obviously, if you're investing in stocks, that's going to be a, more of a risk than just keeping in cash, right? But there's going to be a lot more risk with that. These guys risk their lives, their body, to accumulate this net worth. This is the ultimate story of risk and reward. What are your thoughts? Uh, man, Would is it worth it? Uh, man, as, as a big fan of these guys, I used to... I idolize these dudes. I thought they were so cool. The aesthetic. I, yes, it's totally worth it. You've left behind an incredible <laughs> legacy. Yeah. You're the OG jackass crew. Like yeah. jackass. There's You can be often imitated, never duplicated. Mm -hmm. Often imitated, never duplicated. I like that. Yeah. These guys are legends. I'm glad they, you know, put their body through what they did. They used to refer to themselves as scientists. And they're like, we have to prove that the body can do this or it can't do this Damn. and uh, that's how they would kind of justify Scientists. it <laughs> okay what are your guys thoughts would you to be worth two three five ten million dollars let's not even talk about you know being johnny knoxville uh, to be worth by age 45 50 two to eight million dollars i get that's quite so let's call it five million dollars by age 50 would you put your body through all this is the question okay you're putting your butt like these guys, like um, Johnny Knoxville, age 50, his body is probably like an 80 year old man at this point. Oh, I love the yeah. skit when he would actually dress up as, as a, yeah, an 80 year old, old man yeah, yeah, yeah. and do all sorts of ridiculous stuff. You'd steal. But with that many, <laughs> exactly. It's, oh, sorry. I didn't mean to steal that. But, you know, again, bit by an alligator. Um, Dude, that's nothing. <laughs> hit by an alligator, uh, hit by a bull, like constantly. Hit hitting. by a bull, yes. Yeah, they re it, constantly hitting each other in the nuts, like constantly, constantly. throwing um, things across the. Yeah, uh, someone shot him. Uh, one of the cops shot him with a. I forget what it was. I think it was like a pellet, like one of those like, like pellet gun. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. A pellet gun. But, like without a shirt, that guy's. Yeah, honestly, it's been a, a while since I've watched the Jackass crew. I like I do like ridiculous from time to time. Not that that's yeah, that's they're, they're not doing it. They're showing videos of these idiots doing mm -hmm. this kind of stuff. Um, but basically, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I'm seeing a lot of not, I'm seeing a lot of no. I'm seeing hell no. Yeah, Andre's hell, hell no. no. Young John no. Mark G nah. I'm good. This is where your health is your wealth and your network is your net worth. Contradict one another. Well said. Wow. This is where your health is wealth and your network Guess is your net worth. Guess who said it? Wow. One Young David. Few, some guy named David. <laughs> that's great. Anyway, that's awesome. Awesome, man. Yeah, I think these guys are legends. I'm glad they did what they did. Fight a gorilla, Louis says. Also, I, I met Steve-O, a sweetheart of a guy. He, I could like, see him being actually totally nice. Awesome dude. Awesome dude. Maybe we can have him on someday. Maybe, Steve-O. Um... Anyway, these guys are certainly jackasses. Yeah. So now, speaking of jackasses, now we'll do a quick little segment called Financial Advice for Dummies. All right. Okay. So, you know, there's so much stuff going on in the market these days. Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Shiba Inu, what should I do? NFTs, stock market, companies, Tesla, Elon Musk. But at the end of the day, the what, something that you guys have to focus on is how much should you be spending on food and rent each month? Okay? Right. See what I went there with that? There's so much stuff that you could be focused on. But at the end of the day, the basic stuff is how much should you be spending on your eating and living cost each week? I'm sorry, yeah. each month. Yeah. Okay? So nobody likes to budget, so I'm going to budget for you. Oh, I'm going to say, hey, I'm going to do yeah. this for you. Let me take these so notes. Basically, let's, and we can extrapolate these numbers. You, if you make a little bit less, you make a little bit more. But if you are making $50,000 a year, nothing crazy, not amazing, not poor, Doing okay. 50 grand, single person, you know, obviously if you're head of household, married, there's that's another that's another level of things. But if you're making 50 grand a year, here's how much you should be spending on food and rent each month based on 50K. It's a CNBC story. So let's say you make 50 G's. Okay. After taxes, you're probably again, this is gonna depend on your state, your income, this, the bracket, state tax. This is a very general thing here. So Play along accordingly. Uh, after taxes, you're probably going to be taking around, taking home around forty thousand dollars. If you're making fifty, let's say your taxes are twenty percent, give or take. Now you're 
walking away with about $40,000 a year take-home pay. And if you break that down, that's about $3,300 a month. We're getting somewhere right now. So your housing, your housing, the cost should be no more than 30% of your gross income. Let's do some Mm. basic math for people at home. You're making 50 Gs. 30% of that is $15,000. 15,000 divided by 12. That's how many months there are in a year, David. Okay. That comes out to $1,250 a month of what you can afford in rent. So let's just talk about this for a little bit. If you make 50 Gs, you should be, again, around 30% of gross income. Your rent should be somewhere around twelve, thirteen hundred dollars. That's the number, max. Now, if you double that, if you're making a hundred grand, now you can spend twenty six hundred dollars a month in rent, right? Right. You're making two hundred grand. Twenty six times two, fifty four. Now you can spend fifty four hundred dollars in rent. See how that works? So thirty percent is the number. If you're making fifty G's, keep your rent somewhere somewhere around twelve hundred bucks. Cool. This is your rent, bro. This is what you can afford. Now you know. So if you're spending two grand a month, you but find. you make fifty grand a year, you're done messed up. Yeah, you and we'll talk find. about a budget in a second. We're gonna have to find out where that money is uh, can be used elsewhere because you, you're only making fifty grand. That's the number. Right, right. So question is, where are you at with this in your rent? Number two. Now food. I talk about your big three expenses, which include your housing, which we just talked about. Your right. transportation, we talk about cars all the time. Yeah. Number three is your F and B, your food and beverage. This and we're talking about your food right now. So your food should be somewhere around ten percent of your total pay. Ten percent. Okay. okay. So of your take home pay, let's say you're making thirty three hundred bucks a month. That's I'm sorry, thirty exactly, thirty three hundred bucks a month. Ten percent of that, three hundred and thirty dollars a month. Okay? I'm so maybe average. that's eighty bucks a week. Maybe that's somewhere around there. So you go out and you drop a hundred at the bar one night. Yikes! You already used it up for you used it uh, up. You yeah. used up a third of your stuff. So the average uh, U.S. household is uh, their monthly groceries. Now we're talking groceries here in this segment. Is just a little under four hundred bucks, three hundred and eighty bucks. Call it four hundred bucks. So that's about twelve percent of their budget, right there. So. You got to ask yourself, okay, there's a difference between groceries and take and going to the grocery store, going to, you know, Publix down here in Florida, or you're going to, um, you know, Woolworths or whatever the hell you got going on, or yeah. whether that's Whole Foods or whatever it is, or Whole Paychecks. The difference between doing that versus doing Uber Eats or DoorDash, you know, or takeout delivery three to five times a week, like certain people we know. And there's a difference between doing that and going to actual restaurants, happy hour, eating, drinking, eating out, that kind of stuff like that. So with your F and B, it's death by a thousand bites. So ask yourself, all right, cool. Have I ever even done a food budget? All right, if I make 50 Gs, take home pay, 10%, 3,300 bucks. Yeah, I kind of need to be around 400 bucks for the month. That's 100 bucks a week in groceries. And we'll talk about, all right, well, if I want to spend extra on the weekends, all right. This is, these are numbers that you need to do. Yeah. This is important. Because you know what you're paying in rent. You know what your That's car fixed. payment is. It's kind of fixed. These things are kind of fixed. Food is the one thing. It's just like, I don't know, just swipe. Right. Swipe. Swipe I don't lunch. know. Ugh. Swipe lunch. Do you want to get bucks. beers after work? You want to yeah. get beers after work? That's 60 bucks. Bing, bing, bing. Right. This shit adds up. Right. Right. So so let's let's recap real quick. Yes. I've been taking notes, Sauce. Billionaire by episode 100. Yep. 30% on your housing. Yes. And that's based around your 3300 a month. That's based on your total gross income. So if you're 50 grand, you know, your take-home pay at 3300 yes, you should be spending... Um, what was it? Twelve fifty, exactly. Right, twelve fifty a month on housing. If you're making fifty G's, if you're making Correct. fifty. This is all based around fifty. It's G's. all That's based right. around fifty G's. So if you're only making forty, scale it down a little bit. If you're making mm-hmm. eighty, scale it up. A this little is bit. good stuff. This is good stuff, bro. This is good stuff. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We go this down is, to we're food. helping the people. Now we're going on food. That's ten percent of your total pay for the month. So again, yes. so we're looking at three hundred and thirty dollars per month, or mm-hmm. hundred. Or I'm sorry, or eighty dollars per week. There you go. Mm. Now, you might be saying, this isn't enough. i got to have a little more flexibility. I want to go out and I want to drink. I want to have a thing. Right. All right, let's talk about this. There's something called, we've talked about this. Let's talk about an overall budget. Now, there's something called the 50-30-20 rule. 50% goes to your needs. Mm-hmm. 30% goes to your wants. 20% goes to your financials, savings, and debt. So let's just do a quick little calculator. Um, if you're making 50 Gs, mm-hmm. 
Okay. 50 G. Now let's talk about overall budget. Needs, wants, financials. financials right. Okay. 50 Gs. After taxes, you're making 40 Gs. Right. What have you. 3300 bucks a month. Mm-hmm. 50% of the 3300 these are your needs. Housing, food, transportation. Okay. Is $1,650. 1650 So in your needs, I need this. My rent. I got I to gotta have utilities. I got to keep the lights on over here. And I would what I would call a stocked fridge. I'm not. These aren't. This isn't Uber Eats. This isn't going out to the club. This I got food in the fridge. Necessities. Necessities. Like this, uh, this is the basics. This isn't the sushi at the nice sushi. This is like, yeah, I need some like meats and cheeses and milk and like this basic stuff. You're at sixteen fifty, okay, of your necessities. Now thirty percent can go to your wants. Now what are your wants? Um. Uh, by the way, this is thirty percent. This is nine hundred ninety dollars. So about a thousand dollars goes to wants. 1650 needs 50 percent about a little less than a thousand bucks 990 your wants what do you want you want to go out you want to have a nice time you want to go to the bar you need a nice cell phone you want to have a cell you know obviously your cell phone bill is kind of a in between a need and a want what type of stuff you want to go out um you want to buy new clothes that's every month you got a thousand bucks to like what do i want to do this month netflix subscriptions taking a girl on a date buying your man some flour whatever the hell it is um these are your wants but 20 percent, and here's the kicker baby Save that money. 20% needs to go to your savings or your financials or paying off debt. That's $660 a month. So if you're taking home $3,300 a month based on 50 Gs, here are the numbers. 50% necessities, $1,650. $1,650. 30 your wants, $990. Call it a G. Those are your wants. Financials, the key, 20%, $660. Stack that cash. Pay off debt, contribute to your 401k, whatever it is. The, the key to it all is having that 20% mindset. You see what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's a puzzle. you got to figure it all out. How much am I spending on rent? How much am I spending on food and beverage? How much is my car? Do I have a car? Do I have an Uber? Actually, I don't have a car, so I'm just Ubering everywhere, so I'm saving money so I can spend a little bit more on rent. All right, cool. Rent's crazy expensive. Dude, I ain't going out. Like, It's a puzzle. But the 20% mindset is key because... You can either pay yourself first or you pay yourself last. The people that pay themselves first have proven time after time to build wealth. They're stacking cash. They're putting it on the side. They're contributing to their 401k. They're investing in their business, whatever it is. They're putting that money away, and then they'll live on the rest of the 80%. The people that try to spend first, go out, pay their rent, have a good time, eat, drink, and be merry – They've got no money left at the end of the month. And then it's just a cycle. It's a vicious cycle. Yeah. Pay yourself first. You've heard that a million different times. But this is like the real life example of why you need to pay yourself first. Put your money aside. Invest. Get it out of there. Then you spend what's left. See what I'm saying? David, for someone who somehow makes somewhere in this ballpark, what did this do for you? Well, this kind of just puts things in perspective. So I did something similar a couple of weeks ago where I just tallied up. I was like, all right, this is how much I'm getting this month total with all my patrons. Oh, it sounds to me like you did a budget. It sounds like a budget, right? <laughs> is that what that's called? I don't yeah. know. Uh, and then I went, all right, what are the total expenses of all my bills? And I went down to the tiny nitty gritty shit like Spotify, Hulu, all these little things that are just yep. automatic. Oh, yeah. That you miss. Yes. Also found a bunch of shit that I wasn't using. I was paying like two bucks for like Nintendo or something. I was like, what the hell? What was Get the it last out. time I played Get it game? out. Get it out. Like, immediately. I was like, Slash that. $50 a month on uh, sound effects on something that I don't, I now yeah. it's, I don't use. Um, so I went through all that and um, found out my exact numbers. But this isn't too far off from like what I got. And so this really, again, puts, gives you bumpers. We were at Extreme Action Park with a staff meeting, and they asked you if they want the bumpers for the bowling. This kind of gives you those bumpers. So when you roll your money down, you keep it in line and you hit a keep strike. Keep it in line, exactly. So this so, does a lot. This is good. This is the, the numbers that people are like, all right, yeah, I should budget, but how much should go to this? How much is too much for my saving? This- you know what this is? What I talk about at the beginning of every show? This is 50% knowledge, 50% behavior. Right. Knowledge, okay, maybe I didn't know these numbers. Yeah, okay, now maybe I Maybe have... I didn't know. Now you know, bro. Right, exactly. The more you know. Now, what are your behaviors? Are you staying within that budget? Are you spending too much on rent? Do you need to downsize? Do you need to get a roommate? Can you actually spend more on rent? Hey, I'm doing okay. Oh, you know what? I actually don't want to spend that much because I want to save that mo- I want to want save that money. Like these are the this is what gets me excited. Yeah. I got to be honest with you. Talking about the rate of return of a certain index fund and the mutual fund, like that's that's not tangible stuff. 
rent each and every month? How much food you're putting in your stupid face, David? <laughs> this is tangible stuff. 100%, yeah. You have a beautiful face. I'm sorry. Thank I don't want to No, no, it's I'm all okay. right. I'm, 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 you know, and this is funny because knowing all these things and having this plan gives you that peace of mind, right? Ooh. And so you don't have to worry about, oh my God, am I going to have enough? Yes, I am because I made that plan already. Mm, I, I already, like I know exactly where my money's going and what it's doing. So will I have enough for, you know, to put gas? Yes, I do. Yes. I know exactly I where the money's going to. So this that's the one less thing you gotta worry about. This is what I'm talking about. This is why I'm here. Dude, I think I just made a million bucks by just <laughs> saying that. Well, you said peace of mind, and that's great. That's a great yeah. segue into this next story. We're wrapping up. I know we started a little bit late, and I know that uh, we had some technical dif difficulties. I'm having difficulty speaking right now. <laughs> but you talked about peace of mind, and that's yeah. a perfect segue into this next question you know with all the, the the chaos these days about inflation and you know all the nonsense that's going out in the world you know you know what's getting a bad name these days cash, cash. call me crazy but cash ain't dead baby you know ray dalio took a lot of heat before the pandemic he said cash is trash cash is trash yeah maybe if you're worth a billion dollars cash ray is trash so you can diversify your portfolio and you can only have five percent in cash most people cash ain't dead baby yeah save that money ain't dead save that money ain't going anywhere david right amen okay so yes inflation's happening i get it but i recommend having some cash on hand okay so it is essentially important i know i've i've, I've gone to almost blows with Uncle Robert Kiyosaki about this kind of stuff. <laughs> Cash ain't shit. Yes, it is. Save that money. No, oh, it's not. Zimbabwe dollars. Invest. Real estate. Debt. Save that money. is bad. I've had problems with that. So, you know, I say save that money, and people actually think that, like, have you ever heard of investing? No, no. Tell me more. What, what's that? Yeah, yeah, of course I've heard. But in order to invest, there's levels to this game. you got to have that cash. you got to save that money and work your way up to investing. Not the other way around. A lot of people these days, they see what's going on with crypto and NFTs and so much money being made that they're all in on investing. They're buying stuff on margin, taking on debt to invest. Shit could come crumbling down any minute if you don't have cash on hand, an emergency right. fund, a rainy day fund, or what I like to call a cushion, you're going to be left out in the cold, okay? So here are actually the top four reasons that you should have an emergency fund if you're an investor. Okay. Okay. If you haven't started investing yet and you just look working on cash, I get it. You're not going to be like, well, why would I have cash? But a lot of investors are like, all my money's in the market. 90% of my net worth straight up is in the stock market. 90%. Wow. Okay. Um, that's whether that's actually. index funds, whether that's um, 401k, whether that's a Roth IRA, I, I own some Bitcoin. 90% of my wealth is um, in the market, in appreciating assets. But you best believe I got a hundred grand in cash just sitting there. God forbid this world comes crumbling apart. Okay, right. that peace of mind. That peace of mind, baby. Now let's get into it. Here are the four reasons that you should have cash on hand if you're an investor. Number one is just straight up risk. Okay, you know the, the stock market has made quite the recovery. Okay, but it's still risky. You know, you know how much the stock market is up the S and P when I talked about the S and P five hundred. You know how much how much it's up. This year alone, how much? Sixteen percent. Mm, Not bad. Wow. A yeah. healthy return, sir. Because on average, it returns around 10, 10 a year. Eric needs to get in on that stock market. Right? They're losing out sixteen percent investment. There it is, ROI. But it's no guarantee that it's going to go up forever. So there's a lot of risk when you're investing. This is basic stuff. But this is why you need to have cash because if the market tanks or your investment portfolio goes down and you need cash, it's like you don't want to pull out of that. You want to pull out a loss because you only realize these. Losses or gains when you sell. Right. You understand know what I'm saying right there? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm following. Okay. Number two, great segue, cash equals peace of mind. This is so underrated. This is so underrated because if you've got, yes, again, you know, yes, there's inflation. No, you're not earning ridiculous returns on your Bitcoin but you do have peace of mind if you're sitting on cash. Now, when we talk about an emergency fund, a lot of people will recommend that you have six months saved up for an emergency fund, right? Six months. Me, I'm like, double it. Double it. 12 months. Fuck it. Yeah. Cash. Okay? God forbid something happens. I love having cash. Yeah. I do. Okay? Some people might say, I have too much cash sitting on the sidelines. I'm good, bro. 
You know how good it feels to wake up and no matter what happens today, no matter what happens this week, no matter what happens this month, no matter what happens this year, I'm okay. Yeah. Do you know that feeling? Have you ever had that feeling? Um, No. No. (laughs) Most people don't have that peace of mind because they don't have enough cash saved up or they don't have that much investments that they can, you know, lean on when the bad times come. But if you play your cards right, David, 100 episodes in, you're going to have that peace of mind. Ooh. Okay. Can't wait. Episode 15. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Here we go. So anyway, so people say three to six for an emergency fund. I say, look, 12 months. Whatever that is. At minimum, I say 10 grand. Yeah. 10 grand changed my life. It's just, I remember being 26 and I didn't have two nickels. I started making money by the time I was 27. All of a sudden, I had a little bit more than 10 grand. Like it took some time, year and a half, sales job, what have you. Dude, life changes. Stress goes away. Issues happen. Flat tire, cool. Here's a hundred bucks, right? Someone's wedding, birthday gift, cool. Four hundred bucks, whatever it is. Peace of mind. How much? I mean, how I much? I mean, how much? <laughs> how much could this possibly? But it's the it's it's true. Yeah, it's true. It's an anniversary. You're gonna spend five hundred bucks on a nice gift. Deal me up. Sign me up. Yeah. Big deal. Um, number three. Number three. Not every dollar that you have needs the maximum return. Right, we get so caught up in I gotta get a return on my investment, right. return on investment, ROI, return on investment. Yeah, but that's not for every single dollar. Some dollars can just be in cash. You know, mm-hmm. they talk about there's such low interest rates these days. Why would you be in cash? You're basically losing money to inflation, and you're not making any money. Uh, you have zero ROI on your cash. That's fine. That's not what cash is for. That's not what your emergency fund is for. Your emergency fund and your cash on the sidelines, your cushion, has nothing to do with return. It has everything to do with security. Feeling safe. Mm. David, you ever just want to feel safe? All the time. Yeah, you know, I see you go up to your lady friend, you say, just give me a hug. I want to feel safe in your arms. <laughs> see it all the time. There's Kiki over here. He wants to feel safe. Just mostly, his lady. I do it mostly with Eric when I'm like, hey, can I just get a <laughs> hug real quick, man? Exactly. But um, it has everything to do with security. It has, it, it, you know, Again, talking about myself, 90% of my net worth is in investments. It's making a rate of return. Put my money out to work, compound interest, all that fun stuff. The staple, you know, yeah. is cash. It's like if you're traveling. Yeah. So I like, I'm going to use some more travel analogies. I got something for you. But if you're traveling and you're going to go around the world, your investments, that's your luggage. You're putting that on the plane. You know, good luck. I'll see you in London. I hope. Right? Yeah. But your cash, that shit's right on your carry-on. That's on your person. That's on you. Okay? The investments, risk, reward, all that. Cash on deck. Keep that on you. Keep it on your person. Okay? So not every dollar needs the maximum return. There's a reason that Warren Buffett in the news right now has $150 billion worth of cash on hand. He could deploy that at any second. He says, no. Something's up out there. Mm -hmm. Something's smelly. Grandpa Warren sitting on cash. Okay, because when you have cash, Mm -hmm. you have options and opportunities. Options come your way. Hey, man, I need uh, I'll talk about this with Bitcoin. Options coming your way. Boom. Seize the moment. Opportunity. Boom. I had cash. The whole point of investment is like it's it's out there. Keep it out there. Don't touch it. Cash. All right. What are we going to do with this? Emergency fund. Make some moves. Opportunities. Cool. There it is. Warren Buffett all over the news right now. One hundred fifty billion dollars cash just sitting there. Pat talked about this in the podcast. What's he doing with all that? Does he have something, Let me know something we don't know? He wants you to handle that. Okay. And then this is number four. I love all these things, not taking on too much risk, having peace of mind, understanding that every dollar doesn't need a maximum return. But most of all, I like the ability to make moves. Making moves, David. This yeah. is what I would call flexibility. Mm. Right? I'm living in Miami. I got to go to Dallas. Boom. I'm renting. Cool. Done. Done with my lease. I got cash. Boom. Moving to that. Or back in Boca. Boom. All right. Cool. Now we're moving to Fort Lauderdale. Boom. Making moves. Flexibility. Low overhead and high flexibility is the key to life these days. Let me say that again. Low overhead and high flexibility is the key to life these days. The world is moving so fast these days. Things are happening so quickly around us. We don't know what the hell's going on. But if you've got low overhead, yeah. like if you only have a couple thousand bucks of expenses each month, right. maybe it's a little bit more than that, 
and you have the crazy flexibility, dude. I'm going to moving to New York. I'm moving to a new opportunity, taking a new job, moving to Austin, making moves. I'm in Boston. Now I'm in Austin. Now I'm in Austin. Now I'm in Boston. Which one is it? I don't know. I'm flexible as fuck. Hell yeah. <laughs> Buys you opportunities. Exactly. So this, the, the world has never been uh, this chaotic and changing so fast. You got to have your head on a swivel. You got to be able to pivot. And it's never been more valuable to just be able to have cash to make moves. That's yeah. it. So people say the cash is trash. Cash is still king in my book. Okay. Inflation, 6% inflation and all. Cash is still king. Okay. Because once you can master the cash flow game, that's when you can start investing. Not the other way around. Right. Start investing and then figuring out what to do with the cash. Okay. Um, I got a question here yeah. from uh, the Josh the Josh Hart 90. Should I not invest in my employer's 401k plan until I have at least six months of savings? Kind of piggybacks on having six. I would I would say hold off on that. Yeah. Have cash. Again, your 401k is you're not touching that for 50 freaking years. You have time for that. <laughs> Short term versus long term. Yeah. Bring up that question at the end. Um I'm, I'm going to explain a story right now of how I got into crypto. We're going to skip this uh, this other story about um, the different types of mutual funds. We'll save that for another episode. Let's talk about the, when you have cash, what you're able to do with it. Okay. okay? So um, let's pull this up. So this is some of the, one of the benefits of me saying save that money, save that money. Obviously, I invest. I talk about it all the time. But I'm going to tell you guys a story right now. This is that crypto story, David. Oh, is the crypto story? Yeah, so we're gonna we're not gonna talk about that um, oh, the different types of mutual funds. We're just gonna move right along. Okay. Um, this every week we do the crypto corner. This crypto corner, this story is actually my story. Okay. Okay. So Let's hear it. Um, let me explain how I got into crypto and Bitcoin, and then I'll give you a you know my two cents on on what's going on right now because the crypto market is insane. Okay. So let me take you back. The year was 2016. Okay, let's pull up this picture. Tell me the story. Pull up, to pull up these two pictures. And my best, I have a couple best friends. My best friend is a guy named Adrian. We'll leave his last name out of this. Which one Adrian, do you want first? The, the group pick. The group pick. So this guy, Adrian, he's in this picture. Um, yeah, he's, he's this guy right here. He's a CNBC journalist. He worked for CNN. Total smart dude. Talented. He was in between... A career paths right there in between jobs and he says dude I, i'm really looking into this bitcoin blockchain bitty bop crypto stuff and I'll, yeah good luck with all that buddy i have no clue bitty what you're bop. talking about 2016 my other buddy chris humphreys you might recognize him from nba fame and, and other things this picture was in 2016 we were talking about crypto after the game he was playing for i want to say the washington wizards at the time okay and it was after the heat game we're just chatting, and, and we start talking about crypto. And I said, I, did, I have no clue. About it. I have zero clue about this stuff. 2016. <coughs> now let's get into the story. So this guy right here says, look, bro, I really believe in this marketplace. You could take that pick off. Um, I really believe in this marketplace. Um, give me 10 grand, and let me show you what I could do. I go, no, dude. Uh, like, what? What are you talking about? He said, give me 10 grand. I give him 10 grand. A week later, give me another 10 grand. Mm. Like, Dude, what are you talking about? Like, this is insane. A week later. A week later, crypto had gone up, what happened? 2016. 2016. Long story short, I end up giving the guy $50,000. Oh, my God. Okay, 50 grand. And again, I, I remember mocking Bit, I, I would say this thing. I don't know about Bitcoin and blockchain and bitty bops and digital coins and doody doos and uh, and uh, Dogecoin. I don't know any of this stuff. Right. But I trust you. But I trust you. I know you know what you're talking about. I don't know if you're right. I don't know if you're wrong. Was there ever a but time? But I trust you. Ever a time you're like, okay, I've given him 40 grand. I've given him 50 grand. No, but I know. But uh, like yes. 30 or 40 grand, did you ever say, uh oh? Yeah, I, it, but here's my point. Here's my point. I understand the difference between savings and investing. Savings is day to day, week to week, month to month, even year to year. Right. Investments is a five year minimum thing for me. Now, if you're talking Roth IRAs and 401ks, it's 40 years down the road, 50 years sometimes. You know, if you're a little bit older, maybe it's 25 years, but it's long term. 
Saving, short term. You know, needed now, emergency fund, right. long term, retirement plan, investing, time, compound interest. These are two totally separate things, saving and investing. So when I knew that I gave him this 50 G's, this was not a savings thing. This was an investing thing. Mm-hmm. Long story short, 2017 market crashes. It reached all time high, crashes towards the end of the year. I've given him 50 G's. Now my 50 G's is like 20 G's. Do I sell? No. I don't sell. The hell do I? I don't need the money. Again, this is an investment. I'm not. This is short term. I say, all right. He's like, you know, obviously he feels bad. He's my best friend. I don't think he's going to run off with the cash. Best friend. And um, I say, all right, let's go. So what I start doing is saying, all right, let me start learning a little bit about this. this is the people starting talking about it a little more. And then show up the next picture. Yeah. And then I went to something called a Bitcoin conference down in Miami. This would have been 20. 17, 2018, somewhere around that time. Young Saws. Young Saws. Younger Saws. Three, four me. years ago, I went, you notice there's a microphone in my hand, and I started doing interviews about Bitcoin. And I started learning. And believe me, I was not <clears throat> a believer at this point. Wild, crazy people, you know, they believe in Bitcoin like crazy, amazing content. We should probably repurpose some of that. Um, <laughs> and... It was it was eye opening how many people were talking about Bitcoin and why they believed in it so wholehearted, yeah. wholeheartedly. 2017, 2018. The market didn't make a comeback until what, mid to late 2020? Summer of 2020 is when the market came back and Bitcoin went back 20,000, 30,000, what happened, and then it crashed again. But point is, Bitcoin has been on the map for sure for a handful of years. This was not at a time where Bitcoin was the most popular thing on the planet. These were things, 2018, people were still doubting Bitcoin. What's my point about all this? This is how I got into Bitcoin. Let let me explain something. I guarantee you, knowing me, I would now, in 2021, just be looking into Bitcoin and crypto. Because I'm a traditional guy when it comes to this. Yeah. Stock market, save build wealth long term, take on some risk, not crazy risk. I'm not gambling money, I'm not day trading, I'm not forexing. Stick to crypto, what you know. Stick to thing. what you know. It's, you know, but I'm so thankful that I believed in him. So now, because of him, I own a few Bitcoin. Good boy. A couple different altcoins, but most importantly, and this is definitely something that I would totally not even look at at all these days because I think it's just a co- bunch of nonsense is he took that money and he invested in an nft platform one of the bigger nft platforms out there so let's just say this sometimes it's not what you know it's who you know Mm -hmm. and sometimes you just bet on the right horse or you know if you trust someone and you can kind of split the risk because i'm like look i'll provide the capital you do the work i don't know about all this kind of stuff like that the point is i bet on the right person now my 50 g's is significantly more than that let's just put it that way okay so that's how I got involved in crypto. So now what can you take of this? Maybe you're the person who knows a lot about crypto, but you don't have capital. Now you need to start talking to some friends. Listen, I understand this market. Trust me. Let me, let me, let me long-term prove to you that we can do something here. Trust. Trust is a major factor here. Or if you're the person, right, that doesn't know shit about crypto, right. um, but you've got some capital, maybe you approach people that know about it and say, hey, where do I get started? Again, be a sponge. Learn. Soak it all in. If you give up about this marketplace, figure out a way to get into it. I believe that you should have 5 to 10% of your portfolio into something very risky, like crypto, if you're young. Okay. Let me say that again. If you're young, now's the time to get involved in something a lot riskier than what you're used to. Okay? Whether it's a Bitcoin, which is less risky in the terms of whether it's Shiba Inu, whether that it's NFT. NFT. I'm not saying to go all in on this at all. But if you were to, now's the time. But I'm just saying 5%. Let's say yeah. you've got 10 grand to invest. You've, you're, 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 out, you're debt free. I still believe in my foundation. You're not paying debt. You're not drowning in debt, right? I'm not talking about student loans. I'm talking about credit card debt, automobile debt, the consumer debt, the bad debt, right? Um, and you got your cash on hand, you're good. You've, you've started with your 401k. You're like, you've done the basics. 
take 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, give it a shot with crypto. This is long term. You're not, the goal is not to put 1,000 bucks in and then you, it doubles, you make 2,000 bucks, you pull it out. Like, now what are you going to do with it? Just spend it? This is long term wealth. So if you believe in this uh, marketplace, I didn't believe in the marketplace, I believe in the person. That's my point. Mm hmm. Anyway, crypto is so freaking big right now. We see what's happening. You know, people make an absurd amount of money. You'd be foolish to dismiss this. I agree. That's my yeah. point. Uh, I know Dave Ramsey is one of the ones that's like, eh. well, what do you expect? He's 60 something years old. Do you think he's crypto? I think the majority of crypto is p millennials and Gen Z. Um, so there's some people here that are um, giving some comments over yeah. here. That's great. You can remove those other stuff with the hot girls. No, no problem. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. We'll take that off. All right, let's get into our final story. Then we'll do some Q&A, and then we'll wrap this thing up right there. What do yeah. you think, David? Yeah. Okay. We got, I know that, long today. Well, we started at 510, and we had a glitch in the Matrix. I'm sorry, 410. 410. I'm sorry. Okay. No, we're good. Okay. So final story right here. Um, this has to do with... Um, What's this gentleman? Jordan name? Belfort. Oh, my goodness. This final story has to do with the real Wolf of Wall Street. Love him or hate him. This guy puts himself out there. I'm talking about, obviously, Jordan Belfort. And basically, he has some strong advice for a person your age, 25-year-old. Oh. He says, yeah, yeah, your little job where uh, you make uh, 60 grand a year and you're working 9 to 5. Yeah. You need to quit that. You're never going to get ahead in life. This is his advice. Yeesh. He says this, and I, I've got some things that I agree with this guy on. I have some things that I certainly disagree with this guy on, for sure. So uh, let's just state some quick facts. Um, he went from rags to riches to jail, you know, in that order uh, for stock market manipulation. He's probably the most glorified scam artist of all time. You know, people love him, but obviously the people that he ripped off don't exactly got love for this guy. Okay, right. and if you look at his at his net worth, he is negative one hundred million dollars, negative. $100 million. So he went on a rant recently, uh, basically just smashing and debunking the traditional uh, career path methodology that's basically been planted in our heads since grade school, okay? School system. He basically says these traditional ways is going to make you die and retire with no money. This is what he says. He says, quit that job, the 60K, 9 to 5 job, 25. Quit that job. Get a better job. You got to think bigger. You're never going to get rich. And you're never going to get ahead in life if you, or you have financial security working for someone else, is what he says. And you got to get a second income. This is what he says. So quit your job and just do something better. You got, let me unpack. There's so much to unpack here. Yeah, it's okay? like ridiculous. I do understand when he wants to think big. This is the guy that basically said, You show me your pay stub right now for $75,000. I quit my job, I work for you. Yeah. You've seen the movie. Yeah, okay, yeah. I get it. He thinks big, but he's also a man of excess. He's, a man, he's not just a normal guy, so normal people can't take this guy's advice. He's the type of guy that wants to do something crazy big with his life, even if he ends up in jail. Okay? Right. Not exactly the best advice for, mm -hmm. for normal people. But basically, you know who this job, you know who this uh, advice is for? Sales, 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 sales. If you want to make more money, you have to be in sales. Of some capacity. But that's not for everybody. Sales isn't for everybody. Because sales is a lot of entrepreneurship. You guys know this if you're an entrepreneur. A lot of stress. A lot of crazy nights. A lot of, a lot of struggling your ass off for the first few years. It's not easy. But some of these sales guys over here are starting to make some major money. So I do appreciate what he's saying. Like, look, you can't just be normal if you want to be big. Okay? So I understand that. But... That's not for everybody. Now, let me, give the, let me give the silver lining here. Let me tell you where I disagree with the Wolf of Wall Street, and I actually think that he's dead wrong. If you're a traditional person, you've got a traditional job, you're making 50, 60, 70 grand a year, yeah. you can still get ahead, right? clearly. Yeah. It's just not going to be get-rich-quick stuff like the Wolf of Wall Street. Correct. Let me tell you something. If you're actually following the stuff that we talked about, like the stuff we talked about in the budgeting, 50, 30, 20 budget, spending a certain amount on housing, spending a certain amount on food, understanding the you know, income ratio, boom, 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 cash flow. You know, if you're doing all that, you're setting a budget, you're saving that money, stacking cash, you're getting out of horrible debt, you're starting to invest. If you work for a decent company and they have a 401k with a match with benefits and health insurance and you're doing things the right way, you can end up becoming a millionaire for Sure, if you do things that, it's going to take time. 
Yeah. It might take you to your 60 and 70 and you retire and you got a couple million bucks what's sitting in your 401k or your Roth IRA or your 403b whatever it is, it's going to take time. So it's, a lot of his advice has to do with getting rich quick. Again, he's worth negative 100 million. He's not the type of person that says, "Yeah, good luck with your 50k job and keep going to work and do the lunch pail." That's not his methodology. He's a man of extreme excess and extreme ridiculous lifestyle. So there's a difference, the get rich quick stuff or the long-term approach. You can get rich. You can retire wealthy. You can become chilling at a $60,000 salary. 50, it can happen. Now, couple that with the fact that you're going to get a raise every few years. Your, you know, your income can go up. You can have a side hustle and make more money. Again, there's certain things I agree with and certain things that the Wolf of Wall Street just doesn't understand about the working person. He's never been a working person. Yeah. He's been a scam artist. He's made millions of dollars on, on, on Wall Street. He's the wolf of Wall Street. He doesn't have sound advice for everyday working people making fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000. I'm sorry, he just doesn't. If you're a big thinker and you want to be a salesperson and you want to make, make like uh, me, someone like me that does sales, that makes high income, cool. I hear, I hear you. Maybe someone like me should have quit my $60,000 job when I was a kid, and I did. But that doesn't – different strokes for different folks. So agree, but also disagree with the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, I love the optimistic view and, like, the be bigger than – but, like, also don't – I would disagree with this. 25 years old and you're happy with your 60K a year job and you're, yes. that's kind of like your stepping stone to the maybe 120K. Yes. Do you it. You got to start somewhere. Yeah, you got to start – you don't have to be Jordan Belfort. Yeah. Like, that's the other thing. Like, Jordan Belfort – I have a lot of opinions on this, but yeah, I that's the I 100 agree with you. No okay. It's like yes. Go on. All right, there's that. Anyway, so that's our that's our show for today. As as always, we're gonna wrap the show up with my two cents. We've got about probably five minutes left, so bear with us. And um, we're gonna go on to my Instagram right now at Saws Talks Money, not Monet, not Moolah. Saws Talks Money. Be fearful of uh, fake accounts. And I'm gonna. Find out what you guys have asked me on the DM and answer some questions, and then we'll wrap this thing up. David, I know you're excited, and and when we're ready, we're going to be taking live callers. I'm so on the excited show. for that, yeah. We're going to get ready for that. We're going to prep for that cool. for sure. Let's do but it. in the meantime, we're going to do some Q&A. Okay, let's start from the bottom. Now we're here. Um, let me see what questions we have, and then we'll wrap up for today. Um DB Dabo says, how can I upgrade my skills and earn more? Wow. Up if you're tuning into this, clearly you're gonna Yeah. Okay. Upgrade obviously the answer is read, learn, be a sponge, adapt, ask questions, give up. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Where you are today is not where you'll be next year. How where you are people? next year is not where you'll be in five years. Start somewhere. Okay? So upgrade, constantly be upgrading. Um what is your way to work your way up the corporate ladder? The blind sides ask. What is your way to corporate? You got to start somewhere. I mean, this is kind of what we talked about right here. Yeah. You get, you're starting at 50 grand, get a salary, get a raise, boom. Now you're making 80 grand, boom. And Everything it that we all talked about. ties back up to the first story of how to uh, be. Exactly, yep. David. Thank you. Be curious. Yep. Give a huh. Be a sponge. sponge. Double Learn. Threat. Be a double threat. Work well with others. Grind independently. Be able to take feedback and empower that, others. That, there it is, right there. That's how you. We go know back that to the beginning of the, of the episode. That's how you climb up Boom. the uh, corporate ladder. Um, why is Warren? Why Mila Milja Fit says why is Warren Buffett holding on to that much cash? Your opinion, dude? I don't know. You know, we talked about holding on to cash. It's just not risky. He doesn't want to put the risk out there. I'm sure he's going to deploy it as soon as possible, but maybe he knows something we don't know. Maybe he's expecting some sort of recession or correction in the stock market, and then he's going to jump in there and buy. But you should not be worried about what Warren Buffett's doing with his money. You should be worried about what you're doing with your money. Mm -hmm. Warren Buffett, you know, fun to talk about, but I'm not making moves with my money based on what Warren Buffett is doing with $150 billion. Does that make sense, Dave? Total sense. Yeah, okay. I agree. Um, Probably forgot he had it. 
Sack Football says, I have almost 50K in the bank with no debt, no investments, or retirement. What do I do with it? Dude, this is everything I'm all about. You're debt free. You're debt free. You've stacked that cash. Yeah. Okay. Now it's time to start investing. Now, I don't know where you work. I don't know if you can get a 401k at work. I don't know if you can qualify, I'm um, sorry, outside of work for a Roth IRA. I'm sure you could. That's where you start. You have to start taking on some risk. Did he say how old he was? No, I don't know how old he is, but you got to start taking it. You're not going to get, you're not going to become a millionaire just by saving. Yeah. I know that sounds weird for the save that money guy to say that. The saving empowers you to invest, and that's how you're going to become the billionaire. But unless you're not saving, you can't invest. I'm sorry, millionaire. Yeah. Or David, in David's case, a billionaire. But put, so, you know, Billion. you don't have to put all 50 grand in there. Put five grand. I think the, the max you can put into a Roth IRA is six grand. Put that in there. Yeah. Get it started. Now you still got 44K in the bank. You're chilling. Congrats to you, by the way. Not a lot of people have that. A um, couple other questions, and we'll wrap up. Um, this guy, Hemant, respect to you, buddy. I see you got a lot of questions. I don't even know which one to choose. But Hemant, I think he's in India. Uh, what a guy. He says, can we connect on LinkedIn? Sure. I barely check it, but I need to do better with that. Um <laughs> How can I start net? Hemant asks, "How can I start networking from beginning? How can I provide value? So how can I provide something of value initially, dude? Just that mindset of understanding that, like, look, I need to provide value for somebody in order to get noticed. It you got to start somewhere. This is an internship in America. These are internships. I don't know where it is. he's in India. You know, wherever you can get in, wherever you can fit in, get it, yeah. um, and then take it from there." Um, he's got a lot of questions, Hemant. Um, he's asking for an internship with Valuetainment. I don't know what we got. Hemant, shoot me a message on the DM. I see you got right here. We'll see what we can do for you. But um, the dude's all in. Um, anyway, the, these questions are great, but I think soon, sooner rather than later we're going to be taking call-ins. Awesome. Okay. Yep. Um, that's it. That I, We explained. Let's just give a quick little recap here, David. Here's what we talked about today, just so I can feel at ease here. We talked about... The five ways to become a top performer at your company. You love that segment, love right? It. Be curious. Be a sponge. Take feedback well. Double be a threat. double threat empower. and empower others. We talked about what universities produce billionaires, straight up billionaires. We talked about the one thing on your resume, the biggest red flag on your resume, according to Kevin O'Leary. Kevin O'Leary, Mr. Replied. Wonderful. Yeah, to one of his uh, jobs. <laughs> never apply. We talked about their jackass crew. Loved it. How much money that they... Um, have been spending on medical bills, $24 million to be exact. Shout out to Johnny Same. Knoxville. Shout out to Steve-O. Maybe we'll get him on the show. That'd be awesome. Um, how much, I think the biggest takeaway you had is how much you should be spending on rent and food each month. Yeah, the I think you got something from a, that. Yeah, absolutely. Got my notes. He's got his notes, guys. And call me crazy. Cash ain't dead. Save that money. Emergency fund. It's important. We talked about how I got into Bitcoin and basically NFTs and from my good friend, which is... Um, Borat vest, very nice right now. Very nice. Yes, it's a lot of money in account, in forest. crypto account. Uh, so that's great. And we talked about the good, the bad, and the ugly of Jordan Belfort, the wolf mm. of Wall Street, the real wolf of Wall Street. Uh, he's got his entire life to thank for uh, to Leonardo DiCaprio. Anyway, that's it. I hope you enjoyed today's show. We had some technical difficulties. We started late. We are getting better. We will continue to get better. We will keep improving. We ain't stopping. 100 episodes in, David's going to be a freaking billionaire. This was episode 14, David. You've got some time to go. But anyway, yeah. thank you guys to, for all of you for being a part of the Sauzcast. We'll be back again next Thursday live. Uh, it is Veterans Day, so let me just give a shout-out to the veterans out there. I know that we have some uh, veterans in the Valuetainment audience. We appreciate you. We respect you. You've done. You've fought for our country where 98% of the country has not even thought about that. So respect to the veterans out there. Enjoy your Veterans Day weekend, Tortuga weekend, That's right. here in South Florida. And as always, David, what do these people need to do? Save that money. Correct. Save that money. We'll see you next week.